This video is being offered to the public as part of a town hall produced by the City of Sebastopol City Council's Ad Hoc Committee for the Unhoused. The Ad Hoc Committee for the Unhoused was created in October of 2021 by our full Sebastopol City Council. On the Ad Hoc Committee are two City Council members, myself, Diana Rich, and also Council Member Una Glass. This effort of the Ad Hoc Committee comes in the context of a lot of other efforts by Sebastopol to address the situation that we face with our unhoused. It's obviously a national problem, regional, county, you name it, everyone's facing this issue. Here in Sebastopol, we have the advantage of a small town with a very compassionate heart and motivated um, decision makers and staff that were really and are really prepared to address the situation in the best way we can. You will hear about uh, the West County Community Services operations at Park Village, an incredible mobile home park that has provided housing to people who were formerly unhoused and are now being given opportunities to improve their lives and to move forward in a way that gives them respect, stability, safety, security, and the opportunity to contribute back to their community. You will also hear from people who are living at Elderberry Commons, operated by DEMA, and that's a group of people who were very vulnerable medically. In each of these cases, Park Village and uh, Elderberry Commons. Uh, another thread that you'll hear, and this also applies to Horizon Shine, is the services that are being offered. These aren't just uh, a roof over your head environments. These are environments where there is case management, where there are connections that are facilitated with services that will help people have a step up and move back into society in a productive way. And their voices all say that. Then finally, we come to Horizon Shine, the RV village that is occupied now by people who were formerly on Morris Street and the other streets around that area. We also experienced the impact that the encampment on Morris Street had on our community at large. We saw that it affected those who were living in their RVs on Morris Street, but we also recognized as a city council, as individuals, as members of this small community of Sebastopol, that what had happened to our shared spaces was that they were no longer shared. And that also was something that we listened to and felt a need to step up to in order to resolve. And as a community, in coming forward and supporting Horizon Shine and uh, collaborating with Sonoma Applied Village Services in order to make that RV village an, uh, a reality. And I honestly hope that we now can establish for other communities that yes, it can happen in other communities. We did it here, it can happen elsewhere. That's what this video is really about. That's what this opportunity is about. That's what the town hall is about. Reporting out on the results of all of those very positive efforts that have taken collaborative hard work and focus by just an amazing array of interests in this wonderful little town.
when you're homeless, nothing is guaranteed. You can't think that you're going to come back to all your stuff. You know, it's a, it's a constant race between going to get what you need and preserving what you have. And when you don't have stability in your life, you're always trying to do everything at the same time. It's like a bad dream. You'll be sleeping and people will walk by and be like, oh, these disgusting animals. No, that's like, it's not in your head. Like people are really saying this and it happens like a couple times before I'm able to wake up and like maybe get to work. Working while homeless is even harder than anybody realizes, except those of us doing it. I work full time, and even during the pandemic, with the um, hazard pay and all the overtime we wanted, it's still, it's a struggle. I came to Sebastopol and because I work here. I haven't stopped working except for a year and a half since 1984. I was working at Apple. At Apple in? Cupertino. And was that a full-time job? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you had income coming in. Yes, yeah, I mean, it was, it was good pay. Formal training. Uh, computer science. So did you go to college? Yeah, I have a bachelor's degree. Okay, where did you go to college? San Jose State. Okay. Yeah. In computer science? Yeah. Yeah. So and I have a minor in material science wow. and mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> with me, it was just finding, you know, I was dealing with addiction and and mental illness at the same time, and they're, they're batting heads with, you, with each other. And I ended up quitting, just quitting Apple. Hmm. Um, after working there, I was working at Apple five years and I went to PayPal briefly and then went back to Apple for another um, six, seven years. So basically what happened to me in the big picture things is I ran out of money and I maxed out my credit cards. And then I lost my car. And so I just basically had no money, nowhere to go. It's a strong word, isn't it, homeless? Being a semi-professional most of my life, uh, I never dreamed or thought about being homeless. People ask me now, where are you living? I said, oh, I'm still living at home. I'm just home less often now than I used to be. <laughs> kind of put a play on it. Um, my story kind of started in after the last fires in 2019. I had been in an apartment for 11 years uh, in Santa Rosa, and uh, I got sick in the apartment and uh, had to move out uh, to get away from mold and mildew. And um, so I had some friends that had a house in Coffee Park and I rented, uh, they rented me their master bedroom. And uh, unfortunately, because of the fires there, uh, we all got displaced. I'm disabled and on Social Security, and uh, finding a place to live on that is well, most places are more expensive. I charge more than I actually get from Social Security, so my options are extremely limited. Paying taxes, business license, making a decent wage, getting by, you know, saving a little bit of money, but, you know, when your rent almost doubles, it's... it's no one thought this would happen. You know, all this stuff comes and then it's followed by fires and one thing after another and, you know, 
can't plan for stuff like that. <laughs> I never thought I would be homeless, and I never th thought I'd have to think about these types of things, but people are judgmental of one another to a, a level that's concerning. It's hard to, to, to find like an hour in a day to go, what, on your bicycle? Or are you, what are you gonna pull off? Like, what's, what can you do really without, you know, some help of some kind, or, or like at least some guidance, or maybe um, some encouragement? to watch out for what you have. You know, like most people that are homeless have had to like take their stuff and uproot and move. When you need to do something and you're homeless and you can't do it for yourself, it's discouraging. People that are homeless can't get anywhere because they're always hungry, they're always dirty, they're always looking for the next best thing and you can't calm down or just feel like you know what you're thinking about unless you have just an area, like a, just a, a corner. my corner. The benefits. The first thing that was really that I still am like internalizing and getting over is um, rest, sleep. And got put on the list and got in. Luckily, because the people there are absolutely incredible. It was so nice not having to worry about where we were going to sleep and how we were going to find a bathroom and when we needed one. It's, it was just so much a relief. It's safety, security, access to sanitation, and every so often they had they would serve us meals. It was really random, but it was very much appreciated. Uh, community church was a real big help to me. They had showers there and what. West County Community Services came through the parking lot and told us that they could probably help us get housed since I've been homeless since 2015. That was just beyond words amazing. When we ended up in Park Village, and had our own place, a kitchen where we could actually cook affordable meals and store food. Help us understand, what is it about the opportunity at Park Village that gives you a greater sense of hope or security? What is it that make it, makes it so great? Them not, being, not charging rent above what we can afford the sliding scale thing that is just huge because if you don't make much money like you're on social security or something there's just no way you can afford rent well I like Park Village and all I really do and it's uh, it, it's a lot more hopeful for me okay. in a lot of respects because I'm in a house I'm in a place that, well it's actually a, tr a camper but it's a big enough place that I can call home. We have a program 
can assess you and, you know, can pay what you can. Start your life over. Garden and Park Village. It's so special. It provides food for the entire park. And what the people at that park have done with that small space is enormous. We have so many herbs and tomatoes and peppers and fruit. And just the space and the abundance. Some place to thrive. And I was working for, when I was working at Elderberry Commons, I was working for DEMA also. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I was, I was biking up to Windsor and down to Santa Rosa from Sebastopol. When I worked at DEMA, I saved up money and I'm going to be moving to Guerneville actually very soon, renting a room. And so I have enough money saved up to make a couple months rent basically. And what DEMA provided for me was the structure, basically, and security. And just like, I'm gonna, in a very positive attitude, like I'm gonna get back on my feet. Each step seems to be more empowering. When you have 24 seven access to immediate medical, uh, that DEMA provides, uh, that is one of the biggest senses of security I've gained. Uh, the security is there basically to make sure that uh, everything remains stable uh, and to continue the safety factor, that big word safety, for the people that are, are guests and residing there. And the experience has been, there's been some great training in, in both DEMA's uh, employees and security because the respect they show, the kindness they show. When your car pulls up and you've been at the market and you have four or five bags, they'll come right to your car and take the bags up to your room. And they don't have to do that, you know, but they do it anyway because uh, it, it, it's helping. Well, I mean, they have caseworkers up there that that, that, uh, that are specialists, and they're connected, and you know, uh, they try to get people to move forward in life. And uh, if if they need vocational training, uh, you know, whatever they need. That over the time of of me being homeless on Morris Street, I got to know and trust the people, most of the people from SAVES. Um, and was I felt more like I was invited to be a part of something rather than like being told where to go. It was like this open thing. It's like, hey, we're, gonna, we're working really hard with our vision and it's coming to fruition, like it's gonna happen. I went and got my dog and I got on my bike with my, bike, my, my bicycle, I had my little bike trailer, put my dog in there. And we rode up the bike path and went to the village. It was a refreshing um, kind of um, new frontier like of, of things to think about and try and be a part of, you know? There's more opportunity for applying yourself if you actually have a home base. I just, I just am glad that, that um, I have an advocate, of some a group of people that really care about these issues that we're talking about, people that are, are trying to encourage people to to move from where they are into a place that that's safe and they can begin to like do anything that that is important to them that they haven't been able to do. I have 
my corner.